we are finally back in the Hunter Classic on a rainy Timbergold Trails today, and I'm quite excited for this hunt. We've got a two-map Let's Go trophy hunt today. The first half is going to be here on Timbergold Trails. The second half will be over on Logger's Point. And if by the end of this hunt we can't get a 200 mule deer or better to put on the wall, I'm going to assume we are just cursed, and that's going to be that. But I think it's going to be fun. I don't know that we've done this in this series before. And let's see if it leads us to a trophy or two. And so getting our hunt started off on the right foot with a full herd of mule deer, and they're all like the exact same size, right around 140 or 150. I think we are missing a buck. It should be a herd of five. And I've only seen four thus far, but I think we might as well go ahead, try to take the closest one here with the red dragon. He is the best of the bunch as far as I can tell, maybe even like a 160. Definitely not what we're looking for for the wall. I don't know where we actually hit to not hit a lung. These guys are still coming in though. And that was kind of the hope. If there is a fifth buck back there, we should get to see it. But I guess for whatever reason, there's only four here. There was a wolf that walked across. Maybe somehow that just spooked one. That's the only thing I can think of. There really shouldn't be just four mule deer bucks together. I do think this one's maybe just a touch bigger. Plus the broadside angle helps us. Again though, not quite a drop shot. I know we got a lung on the first one. Second one that may have been just a touch too far back. Now. I mentioned hoping to get a 200 plus mule deer for the wall in this hunt, and that of course is not the primary goal of the Let's Go Trophy Hunting series when on mule deer maps, we're looking for a 400 knot tip, which is a big ask, but so was a 200 typical whitetail for all those years, and it finally happened. So if we keep putting the time in, hopefully we can luck into something like that. You know, if I'm not mistaken, both deer went down to like the exact same spot. I don't even know where we hit the second one. And I'm actually not sure which is which, but I noticed this over here first. This is definitely one of the deer down because the cone appeared from way too far away. That must have been the first one just based on the way that arrow's in there. It was a stomach shot, 153, so maybe that was the second one. The way that looked, maybe he turned as we shot, I don't know. This guy up here though, I think is going to be even a little bit higher scoring then. And obviously the one that we tracked because those tracks are still on the hunter mate. That was left lung and skull at 10 meters, almost a 170 score. So a solid enough start. Just hopefully the next shots find their mark and we don't do too much tracking today. Not exactly moving in the right direction so far, but maybe we can at least kind of practice our shooting. It almost sounded like, yeah, there's another. That's a doe though. So I guess the buck's by itself. Thought maybe we'd get lucky and have another group coming in, but let's focus on getting this guy down without tracking. That's going to be a little bit better. And the bear that was standing there is not going to attack. I did spot it. It's not very big. We did kill on maybe our first Timbergold Trails Let's Go Trophy on a really nice bear, 26 point something. But I think the other bears in our lodge are still kind of subpar. So if we find a good one or a heavy track, we'll definitely pursue that as well. You know, I feel somewhat obligated to point out that this doesn't normally happen when we're not hunting for this series. This might be the smallest Rocky Mountain Elk I've ever seen. <laughs> 65 to 115. I guess we're going to try to take it. There's a whole bunch of deer over there though, and I think more than just the two bucks, I thought I had spotted the third one. So we might get this bull back up a little bit and just hit a grunt call. If maybe a bigger buck walks out, we can take it. Otherwise, we'll just leave that herd. Because it probably is going to just send deer running everywhere if we shoot one and potentially spook stuff that could be better than what's in there. But I want to see what this guy is going to score. He's a 320 weight, 92. It is pretty rare to get a sub 100 Rocky Mountain Elk, especially when most are well above 200. And I'm just not seeing any reason to risk spooking a bunch of other stuff. So we'll just kind of scoot out of here and let them go. And hopefully the next year is going to be a little more impressive than what's in that herd. It's an all too familiar reality. We just continue on these Timbergold hunts to run into average or below average bucks. I'm kind of thinking we may crack out our rifle for this hunt. We have the classic 30 odd six only because we're down to like our final 30 minutes here. We can take him down and get moving, maybe cover a little bit more ground. Now I do have to basically split this hunt in half, hour and a half or so. I'm recording this Tuesday morning prior to the EW stream, and for those of you that watch both Call of the Wild and Classic content, 
I'm expecting there to be something from the EW stream that we're going to make a video on, therefore I have to actually be there to be able to do that. So, we've got around 30 minutes till that happens, and we're going to try to make the absolute most of it. And it does help as well, just because we always try to use all the weapons from our loadouts, we get to actually fire the 30-06 hard shot, by the way. I did not think that's where we were aiming, but 135 score, and we've got probably 300 meters or so to run since we just spooked everything with the gunshot. Well, on the plus side, this elk is considerably bigger than the last one, though even for a Rocky Mountain elk, I'd say still average or a touch below. Kind of a weird angle, and something else is heading our way, but let's get that. There was a wolf, like, right underneath it. How did that even happen? There was another bull that ran off, and I think it was smaller? For the odds, it ended up exactly right there as we were taking that shot. 255 scores, so still 140, 160 inches bigger than the last elk we got. Not close to one worth putting on the wall, though. But it looks like we'll be wrapping up our timber gold portion of this hunt right here in this location. There's a number of things around. We've got a pack of gray wolves. The e collar behind us is attempting to bring them in. We do have this buck. Gotta make sure we place that shot correctly. And there actually was a bull elk as well. Now, we're gonna try to get into a spot where maybe we could see all those things if they come in. But at least we got the buck. And I'm hoping maybe the wolves come down here. We've got some good trophies on like those size plaques. I think we have a melanistic to coyote, a 58 scoring coyote, and maybe a really nice bobcat. But a good wolf for a rare wolf definitely could replace one of those. It actually seems like we might have a herd of mule deer down there. So we're going to hurry up and try to get down to that location. No sign of the wolves or the bull elk. So I'm not really sure where they're at, but we're going to try to make a move and maybe have a chance with potentially five bucks there at getting a decent one. 136 for him. And at least if we can get to like the top of this hill and look down to where they're at, maybe we can get eyes on them quickly. That did not exactly go to plan. Definitely spooked the entire herd, unfortunately. This is like the highest grass that's on Timberwolf Trails and it comes all the way up to this hill. There was one buck that went down that way. None of them appeared to be that big. So I think it's all good. Got a bear heading across there. As long as that's not a big one, which it is not at 18 to 22. I think that's going to complete our timber gold half of the hunt. Still no 200 plus mule deer, but hopefully there's one waiting for us on Loggers Point. And that is a pretty welcome sight as we come here to Loggers Point. Not a 200 mule deer, but definitely far better than anything we saw on Timber Gold Trails. About four and a half hours in between, but our first look at a mule deer here on Loggers is a lot more promising. So what we first need to do is make a shot on this guy. It's a really unique set of antlers. Like, I've seen that rack, but not that big very often. If we don't drop this guy in his tracks, the bigger one is going to be out of here. But that's going to be effective for what we want. And much like earlier, there should be even more bucks back there behind. So maybe there's still a bigger one yet, but definitely encouraging to see the bigger frame on a mule deer. So finally, he's actually on his way in. There's a white tail doe between where he's at and where we're at. And something coming in from the right side, it sounds like. That is another mule deer buck, not nearly as big, and with everything going on, let's just try to land that shot. Should be 30 meters or so. That's going to take him down, and at least finally we have a decent mule deer buck. Just getting going here, and already probably 20 inches bigger than our best one from Timbergold. This guy, that was a 107. I feel like usually that racks 80 or so, so it was pretty cool to actually see it score that high. As for this one, though, probably 180s. I don't think he's quite 190 with that short time. Actually got a sticker there, too, I saw. Double long at 28 meters, 188 score, though. Definitely encouraging to see that. So let's hope we can get one a little bit bigger. But compared to Timbergold, that was a very welcome sight. Now, we do also have in our loadout today the crossbow pistol. And I don't know that I've ever shot a rabbit with it, so that's potentially a first. And it may be the first time we've actually carried it in this series. I talked about adding it to the series once we got our 1,000th cable back bow kill. And I think it'll be a good way to continue getting kills with that. Next shot at 10 meters. You know, we'll have to try it because I saw another rabbit up there. Maybe we can get into position. Also just did a mission apparently, so that's always nice. But because it'll basically drop any turkey inside of, say, 30 meters regardless of hit location, it might actually be one of the better cottontail 
weapons because very often with rabbits, a decent shot just off from being a headshot ends up with them running really far and sometimes surviving it. So this is pretty much the perfect way to test it. 25 meters away, we're gonna keep moving around too. So in case we miss this, if it stays kind of in that hunker down position, which, okay, good to know. Hit it and it did not immediately die. We'll see what happens. But basically, if it had started to stand up and either roam around or anything like that, that shot would have just spooked it. But if they are hunkering down, you can miss them as many times as they want. They're gonna stay there. So that may or may not have helped us. Depends on if it was gonna leave. Body shot, but that's about all you can hit with rabbits if it's not a headshot, and it did go right over here and go down. That's really good to know. I think it was one of the event missions. We had to shoot a European rabbit, and we did. We shot it, I think, twice, just above the head, hit the ear, and it got into its burrow, and we had to wait even longer. So, good to know. Maybe we'll just take the crossbow pistol next time. Man, this is a little bit disappointing. This is a black-white belted feral hog with... Pretty decent tusks, 880 to 990 estimate, and a max weight estimate. If his tusks were a little better, I'd say he could go 1000 plus, and that definitely could be worthy of being put in the trophy lodge. Up there is a pretty big looking coyote, 54 to 60. Could we? I don't even know if we're going to have the space to do it. Could we stick an arrow in this hog? Boy, I can barely even see it. I can see a little bit of white. Either we just somehow... What? I thought we spine shot it. It insta-killed it? I'm going to be very intrigued to see how that happens. So what I thought would happen was we'd hit it anywhere but there. <laughs> it would run off and we'd have to quickly shoot the coyote. Now, in this general vicinity, we shot, I believe, a 58 scoring coyote in the past. So I wouldn't say it's likely that one scores higher. However, I thought it was a deer standing out there before we spotted the hog, so maybe it actually is pretty good. What the heck did we do here? We shoot in the brain? I would say we certainly did. I, straight up, I couldn't even see where its head was. 939 is a nice hog, too. Is it better than like a 160 whitetail? Probably not. I don't think we'll tax that. That is pretty ridiculous, though. I would say very high chance if we attempted to do that, we wouldn't have hit it there, especially given the fact that we couldn't even double lung a couple of mule deer from a tree stand earlier on in the hunt. As for this coyote, maybe we'll have a little better luck with the score. It is a pretty big one, at least as far as the model goes, so fingers crossed. A weight of 25.6 is good, 56 score is solid, I don't think it'll be big enough to remove anything we have in the lodge. Worthy of a trophy shot, but considering the 58 that we've got, I don't think we'll be replacing him. Kinda cool though we got him with the classic 30-06. Always tough to get a decent trophy shot of coyotes, so we're just gonna go with that. And I think we may fast travel to the north end of the map, especially considering we just fired our rifle. Probably spooked everything around, but lots of mule deer up in here and potentially less area for them to head elsewhere during the length of the hunt so far, so hopefully there's some good ones waiting on us up here. Well, I would say it's pretty much official with this buck right here, I think this will be the first time in this series that we actually don't go back to the trophy lodge with a trophy. Now, that may initially sound like a bad thing. However, this hunt was actually pretty solid. We had the 188 mule deer, the 56 plus coyote. I don't think we ever shot anything huge on timber gold. But with the addition here of a 118 scoring whitetail, a couple of solid kills, just nothing quite better than what we already had in the lodge. And what that speaks to is the fact that we've at least gotten somewhere with that trophy lodge to where a 188 muley, a what was he, 980 or 960 hog, things such as that, the 56 coyote, are not better than what we already have. So we'll take that as a plus. I still can't believe we don't have a 200 mule deer in that lodge. Maybe next time we'll come right back, timber gold and loggers again, or just one or the other, try to get one. I feel like it should be doable. It just, for whatever reason, when we come out here for this particular series, it doesn't happen. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.